Welcome back. Welcome back to Reclaiming Power with Rochelle. And for those who are catching the live on Instagram and TikTok, hello to those that are catching the replay on YouTube. Welcome, because around here, we look for, we find, and we reclaim our power. That's what we're doing. That's what we're about. That's what I'm about anyway. So if you're about that too, stick around, because that's what we're about to do. And you're going to want to definitely be present for today's topic because, yeah, it's going to clear out all the shit that's blocking what you want. Mm. I love my tea. I love my tea. Again, welcome, welcome. Today for Friday is definitely something... I know I need to do a little bit deeper work around and dive in and this is something that as well something it's a practice that you want to do over and over and over and over to be clearing things out. Today is Forgiveness Friday. That is the subject that we are going to talk about. And there are a lot of you out there who are going to be familiar with this process and there may be some of you who aren't i know for me when i first did this whew, i sobbed i sobbed and it just it was heavy at first but then you get on the other side of this practice and it's so much lighter so we'll talk about that practice here in a bit but let's talk about forgiveness and what it is to forgive itself. All right. Because of course, you know, in my trusty notes that I love so much. First and foremost, forgiveness, as I have said for years, it is for giving you the freedom to move on with your life. That is the power of forgiveness. That is how powerful the act of forgiveness is because ultimately it's not for the other person it's for you so you stop carrying shit that you don't need to be carrying the things that are holding you down weighing you down and keeping you stuck where you are and apart from what you desire because you're still holding on to these things and like I said I can assure you <laughs> after some instances in my life in recent years or recent months I should say more so than recent years no recent months there's definitely some some forgiveness that has to be done and and a lot of times what I have found when we actually sit down and we do this forgiveness work we do this practice that yeah you seek to forgive the other person right the others involved in whatever this trauma whatever this hurt this pain this vengeance that you have within you to bring about balance again in yourself in your life usually though the very root of that which you are being called to forgive is you because you see in any of these experiences, so often we can look at how we had a role in what happened. In the sense of if we, and that's something too, if we have resentment for an intimate partner that we've been with, for instance, who constantly picked you apart and put you down, but yet you continued to go back to them and stay with them and give them another opportunity and another opportunity and another opportunity to pick you apart and put you down, you had a hand in that. And when you go to do this, this forgiveness work, this clearing work, you have to really be truly honest with yourself and recognize the role that you also played in that. And that's why I say, I know for sure I have a bit of work of forgiveness work to be doing because I, I admit I did that, you know, was involved where it was just picking me apart while I was pouring into their cup. And it would be one thing if the person 
just wasn't even supporting you, but when it's someone that picks you apart, over time, even though you kind of, you somewhat forgive along the way and you give them another chance and another chance, and it's a pattern that continues, you have to realize for yourself that, wait a minute, I let this pattern continue. I did. So I compromised my self-worth and my state of peace, <laughs> inner peace, right? Because we're supposed to be cultivating inner peace. That I was the one who continued to allow the perpetuation of this, this pattern. It's one thing to see potential in someone, but you also have to be very present and see the reality as well. Because ultimately in the reality of things, you're the one that's gonna often be the one that's experiencing that pain and that resentment because it's in you. And so you're resentful of them for what they've created in you, but that resentment's in you. And I love the quote, I love the quote that, that expecting someone else to change or what was it what is it somebody help me with this there's 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 this it's it's there it's right there on the tip of my tongue it's the it's the quote that 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 talks about the correlation of you know it, it's like eating the poison yourself but expecting the, the mouse to die in essence the whatever that that story is. So if you have that, I'd love for you to comment that and let me know exactly and I'll read it out for everybody. But that that quote, that little example is what's coming to mind. It's like, that's how resentment, that's how anger is. It's like, you know, you're eating that poison, but you expect it to affect the other person. But that's all in you. And so ultimately, again, you have to be the one to clear this out of you. You have to be the one to let go of this and give yourself that opportunity of liberation from this burden, this weight that has been weighing you down and keeping you stuck and in your own self-induced state of, of misery, of resentment, of vengeance, because it doesn't feel good to have that. Because again, ultimately, like what I find in myself, as I've said, is I sit there going, oh, you, you're, you're a self-love empowerment coach, Rochelle. What would you say to a client? You certainly would not be condoning her continuing to allow the perpetuation of these patterns. But it takes someone to go through it, to grow through it, to know it very well to then be able to point things out in others right? And plus, it's so challenging, it seems that it's, it's when we're the eye of our own storm, it's very challenging to see the storm that we are creating around ourselves. And that's why, again, within the eye of that storm, we have to be the ones doing that work that we need so that that storm does not continue to rage within ourselves. All right. So let's define forgive itself. Right? I almost didn't have this on my paper. I got to admit, I had to go back and go, ah, I need to put the definition because I'm really loving this definition facet of these lives because even I'm learning a lot in terms of what the actual definition of the word is to be able to go, wow, talk about empowering clarity right there. When you truly understand, when you truly comprehend and understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, that there is that connection inside of you to make absolute fully aligned sense to what you're saying. So forgive, forgive is generically a verb. It's an intransitive verb, but we're, for our context, we're just doing noun, verb, ad we're doing very fundamental. So it's a verb to forgive. It's a verb, right? And we have two very powerful definitions here. To forgive means to give up resentment against or to stop wanting to punish someone for an offense or fault. So you pardon them. You absolve that. It's not that you necessarily absolve them, but you absolve the energy to 
tied to that, the resentment, the, the vengeance, the pain, the trauma of it all, so that you can then begin to reclaim your power from that and reintegrate that back into you so that moving forward, you are ready. <laughs> when you see patterns in people, you give them a chance and then you give them maybe another chance and then you're like, okay, now wait a minute. One more again and I'm peace out because I love me more. I love me more than allowing you to continue to put me down and pick me apart and drop me down to your level. No. Mm -mm. You have to own your worth, goddess. You do. Nobody can do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. To forgive also means to relent in being angry or in wishing to exact punishment for an offense or fault. You see why forgiveness is for giving you the freedom to move on? Because all of that anger, that anger, that's inside you. That's, that's not in them. That's in you. So that's, that's affecting you. All that resentment, that's not in them. It's in you. So it's affecting you. You see? We think that in our anger and in our resentment and, in, in, and, and through vengeance that we can somehow bring about a state of balance. But that's, that's not how it works. We really don't have power over people outside of ourselves except for the power that we have within ourselves to shift and change what we need to change within ourselves to in turn attract a different response from the other person. But ultimately, they are who they are. And to forgive them is for you. It's not for them. Because ultimately, if they have an issue with you, just like with you, it'd be your issue. It's their issue. It's their issue. All right. Forgiveness is a choice. It is a choice. It is something that you must, again, choose to implement the practice, choose to actually do the work to actively move through this anger and resentment and release it, dissipate it, absolve it. That's up to you. You are the catalyst. You and only you can do this for yourself. Nobody else can. Even the act of someone else forgiving you doesn't fully absolve you from what's inside you. You still have to do what you need for you to release this, to clear this within yourself so that you can then be moving forward with your life. So again, forgiveness is a choice. It is not an automatic process. You have to do this for yourself. And I know, I know there are people in this world that have a complete aversion to doing any sort of work, be it the inner work on themselves, work to create uh, the life they want to live. But a life is work in that regard. You know, what is your life's work? You know, what are you going to, at the end, are you going to be carrying all of this and that's going to be what you leave this world with? Is carrying all of this resentment and vengeance and, and anger because of what happened that you cannot change? You can't change it. And again, that's why we hold on to shit is because we think that by staying angry or resentful or wanting revenge, that that's going to, again, fix this. That's going to balance things out. It's going to undo the already done. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Believe me, I wish, I wish a lot of things were a lot easier. But ultimately, the most challenging things I know I find are the, is the work 
on myself, having to confront and face these facets and aspects of myself that normally our egos would much rather say, nope, just, 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 just gonna sweep that under the rug. La, 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 you know, just see no evil, hear no evil kind of thing. But when we ignore it, when we sweep things under the rug, that's when they become truly shadows within us. And then they hide, these aspects of ourselves hide in the shadows and they manipulate us from within those shadows and they sabotage us. And they cause us to <sighs> keep ourselves apart from what it is we want because we're so busy focusing over here on something that we don't have power over. And that's the key here is where is your power when it comes to resentment and vengeance and, and having had something happen to you and, and you're angry about it. Where is your power in that? Your power is in letting go. Your power is in recognizing that you can't change what happened. You can only change how you respond to it from here and now and moving forward. You can only choose the story that you tell surrounding it as to whether it is a, an empowering experience or a disempowering experience. Again, you are the catalyst. And so with that, I will say that when it comes to forgiveness, because they're in our pain, and I say our pain, right? I've been there where you're like, why would I forgive them? Because I could never forget. We're not saying that you forgive and forget. There's <laughs> no. What I know I'm saying is that you are healing this rift within yourself so that you can integrate this rediscovered state of empowerment and say, oh, oh, I get it. Okay, so I'm going to acknowledge my role. I'm going to acknowledge that the pattern was there. I'm going to acknowledge, you know, what went down, how it happened, all these things. You're going to look at this, you're going to reflect upon it, and you're going to extract from it the lessons you've learned. Okay, what did it do for you? This experience, what did it teach you? How are you stronger today because of it? Okay, so you've got to look at it that way first and foremost, because that is the very thing that you're going to reintegrate and then moving forward, you're going to be able to again, be this different version of yourself so that you don't have to do this shit again. You ain't, you ain't replaying this because you are seeing the patterns in you too. And you're breaking those patterns. You're creating different for yourself now. You're saying no more, no more. I'm done. I'm done. But to, the, the idea that we think that it's just a forgive and forget, no. I'm going to point out that I, I wrote this little note. It says, I forgive people. It doesn't mean I accept their behavior or trust them again. It means I forgive them for me so I can let go and move on with my life. It doesn't mean that their behavior was acceptable. It doesn't mean that you condone it. It, it does not mean any of that. It means that you are no longer going to hold such low vibrational states of being as, as anger and vengeance and even blame and shame and guilt in any way, shape or form about the experience. Instead, rather, again, you're going to do this healing work around it and you're going to integrate these lessons and you're going to be stronger because of it all. That's how this works. And so what is the practice that is tried and true and is truly something again so powerful that it's actually an ancient practice that's been passed down for generations in hawaii it's an ancient hawaiian practice that i call the forgiveness freedom practice because again it is forgiving you the freedom to move on with your life this practice by name is the ho'oponopono practice now, it's really quite simple because again, things don't need to be complicated. Just really quick, this is my, what I'm working on, you guys are in, this is my little book. 
that is, I'm currently on, you know, it's in editing, it's an editing phase right now. Um, this goes, I'm gonna be upda updating my Manifesting Moon Kit, Empowerment Toolkit, and that's gonna go along. Go in this, but, ah! Uh, my first official book, my first little book here that I'm gonna be publishing, self-publishing, thank you. But that said, this is part of, of course, this is in the very beginning of this Manifesting Moon process that was divinely guided and it's been a part of my coaching practice for years and all the goddesses who've been able to experience it live in a live group experience which is how I've done it up till now I'm only now making it as uh, making a kit and making it so that you have all that you need in order to do this incredible process and we have fun every time we do it I love it but you better believe the very beginning of this process is the forgiveness freedom practice. Because if you're going to manifest and call in what you want, you got to create space. You got to clear out the bullshit so you can welcome in the good shit. <laughs> okay? That's how we do this here. So, to implement the forgiveness freedom practice, first and foremost, you want to make a list of all the things that you are offering forgiveness for all the ways, all the people, all the aspects that you are needing to release this inner angst, this inner vengeance and resentment that you have, this anger within you, okay? And then with each item on the list, you're gonna go through and you're going to say, I'm sorry forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And that's, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Or I forgive you, right? Make sure we have it on both sides. Because again, when you're doing it for yourself, you want to make sure it's the uh, forgiving me, right? Forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I actually just intuitively by choice wanted to really kind of drive this home and I've added, I release you. Like, I release this, I release it, I release me from this, but the I release facet, that's mine that I've added onto that because again, just to reaffirm for yourself that you are letting this shit go. You're no longer going to keep it inside you, right? So one last time, which you can go and look everywhere to find this practice. It's the Ho'oponopono practice, and it is called the Ancient Hawaiian Forgiveness Practice is what it is. All right. So you can check. There's all sorts of meditations and subliminals and all kinds of things you can find on YouTube and uh, I'm sure just on the web in general, you know. So definitely check that out. Empower yourself to free yourself so you can be moving forward in your life, in your journey. All right. So that said, that's super short and sweet. I will notate that after you do this practice, be sure you're prepared to rest, to restore yourself. I mean, the word rest is in restore. It is the root word of restore is to rest. So rest because this is going to be probably highly charged kind of practice for you because again, you're being called to look at things. Now, as I've already said, highly, highly recommend that you do this over and over and over. And if you have done certain things and you do not feel as though, or let me phrase it this way, or you feel as though there's still a charge with it, there's still, it's still got a trigger with you, do it again. The same forgiveness, the same item on your list, do it again. Do it again. Clear that jet out. Okay, so that's, that is our Forgiveness Friday topic there. And of course, as to go along with, with uh, forgiveness, power of surrender. 
Power of Surrender, which is Dr. Judith Orloff, our um, empath survival guide, awesome leader there. So, whew, forgiveness. Do that practice. And here is what else you may need to be focusing on in the midst of that practice. Wow. In the midst of that practice is to surrender to trust. To trust that no matter how excruciating it is, to trust that no matter what it reveals to you, that you are supported, you are safe, you are protected, you are loved, that everything is working out for you, that everything is going to be okay. Trust yourself, trust the journey, trust the process. Wow. Ooh, and how interesting. We're talking about forgiveness of other people as well. And it says, trust yourself in your decisions. Yes, but don't be swayed by other people's strong opinions about what to do. When it comes to forgiveness and letting go, this is a personal inside job. This is for you. It don't matter what anybody else got to say about it or what their two cents are. None of it. None of it matters. This is about you freeing yourself so you can move on with your life. So trust yourself in this process. Trust that even as you step into and through this passage that is the process of forgiveness that you have to kind of walk into and through this seemingly space of the state of of being in in a, in, a, in darkness this tunnel because you have to again confront things that you might not like to confront you maybe would rather again that it be swept under the rug trust that you are being divinely guided that everything is working out. Trust you in your process of this. It says, take action and be confident that you have chosen the right path. And I assure you, goddess, that the right path is definitely in letting go of that which has been weighing you down and does not serve you anymore. In fact, actually, it is a detriment to you. It is weighing you down. It is holding you back. It is keeping you stuck. It is separating you from your power. And it's time you take that shit back. So I encourage you on this Forgiveness Friday that you go and you do exactly that and you implement this forgiveness freedom practice so that you can experience the liberation within yourself from these things that have been keeping you tied to people, places, and things in your past, even recent past, or maybe even still in your present, that you are being called to cut and let go of and move forward with yourself. Because you deserve all that you desire, goddess. You deserve it all. Remember, you're the catalyst. So let yourself have it by letting yourself let go of that which is stopping you from having it. With that, that concludes our live stream to my dream, Reclaiming Power with Rochelle, episode number nine. I cannot believe we've recorded nine videos in two weeks. Technically, I've recorded 10 because the Super Science Sunday Divine Feminine Energy check-in was last weekend. And we're still in that, and that one's amazing. So you definitely want to go to my YouTube channel and check that out. I have those clips that are coming across, you know, all the different platforms here as well. So you can, you know, have little tidbits of that coming. But go check the whole video out on my YouTube at Empowerment Experiences. So with that, Goddess, if you are looking for your power and you're finding it challenging of finding where it is so you can reclaim it, or if you're not quite sure that you're ready to do that, I'm here for you. I mean, imagine being able to breathe again because you're no longer feeling suffocated by this which you are carrying within yourself. 
You don't have to. To reclaim that power so you can step into a better feeling state of being, I'm here for you. You can book your session, 30 minute one-on-one -on -one session at IamEmpowered.as.me. You can also check out other ways I can support you in your self-love empowerment journey or twin flame empowerment journey, which is really truly a self-love empowerment journey. And once you get to a certain point on it, you'll realize that if you haven't already, right? For those many of us who have realized that. <laughs> Little squirrel there. This self-love empowerment journey, it is, it is about you. It is about you realizing that the power, the power is in your hands, the power to let go of all these things that have been holding you back and weighing you down and keeping you apart from your, your dreams, desires, your power, ultimately. Well, it's because that power, it is inside you. You've just got to let yourself realize that. You've just got to let yourself know that to reconnect with it right so again the power is in your hands goddess because that power has always always been inside you namaste